Uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting of Monday, December 5th. And we'll begin the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please note that this meeting is being made available to the public through a live video and audio broadcast on Comcast Government Access Channel 15 and is being recorded for broadcast at future dates. Comments made in open session will be recorded. And uh, our first action item of the evening, our, uh, we expecting uh, Sabrina, are we expecting anyone to come in and go over the survey results, or are we just going to discuss it? Ourselves? No, you're just going to discuss it. Deb Wall, the library director, right. who does our survey monkey surveys for us, felt that this was so self-explanatory, but should be happy to answer any questions. Okay, I find uh, in our information, attach, please find the results from the survey requested by the selectmen at their October 31st meeting in reference to a proposal to vote to support State Representative <coughs> Josh Cutler's proposed bill that would move the activity of trick-or-treating to the last Saturday in October. 679 residents responded to the survey. 200 voted to support the initiative. 479 voted against it. 176 residents also provided comments. So I would ask uh, the chair to put that comment. Yes, sir. I, I feel the least in part responsible for this. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's been great fodder for the radio and the uh, newspapers and things like that, but it, it just appears to me that we have, you know, some things that are more pressing than, than going into a trick or treating survey. And uh, I would move that we table this indefinitely. Second. I've uh, made a motion to table this and Bill seconded. Any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor of Arthur's motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, hearing none. <coughs> uh, second item is uh, the State Ethics Commission has made a recommendation to the board that we vote an exemption for Mr. Bolter. Uh, to be a to work for the town as a snow as a snow plow driver, and uh, the DPW was always on the lookout for dependable people to man the snow plows when it's necessary, and they are actively seeking drivers. And as a result of that, uh, Mr. Bolter has applied, and he has been accepted. So uh, we need two approvals. Uh, one is from the DPW's director, Gene Fulmini, who has already signed this document. And the second approval would be the Board of Selectmen. So if there are no questions or issues or statements, uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion. Move, I would move that we approve the exemption for Bill Bolter. I mean, his reputation is beyond reproach. I mean, he's, he's a, a legend in town. So. I think we uh, I think we can feel safe that uh, he's going to be plowing our streets. Second. Uh, made a motion by Arthur, second by Dan. I certainly would agree with that motion. Uh, if there's no questions or comments, I just have a comment. Yes, Jim, Bill. Don't mind. Um, the reason that the State Ethics Commission did get involved in it because I called them. Uh, <coughs> I wanted to make sure that this was legal and it was. Um, best interest of the town. Um, they've been unable to uh, find a lot of drivers. Um, so um, I ended up having, buying a plow for my truck, uh, changing my registration to a commercial, increasing the insurance on it, um, and a lot of other things in order, to, in order to do this. So I'm already in the hole quite a bit. So it's not it's not um, that you're going to make a lot of money anyway. Uh, New Book is kind of one of the lowest towns around, I think, for, uh, for paying their uh, plow drivers. And I'm not even 
you know when you get paid if it isn't until <laughs> next summer or something, but uh, how that works out. But in any event, it's, um, I'm going to give it a try. I used to call out for the town years ago, and uh, I thought it helped out. So. Well, I'd like, to, I'd like to just make a quick comment if I can. Um, I think, as I said, that DPW was always looking for competent people that they can count on. And I uh, certainly uh, would say that uh, Mr. Bonga fits that role. So thank you for applying to that uh, job, Bill. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, hearing none. Uh, excuse me, Bill. Uh, then would be four to zero to one abstention. It always amazes me how guys who are retired work more now than ever. <laughs> See what you have to look forward to, Dan. <laughs> you gave me a better retirement than I would have. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have an item on our agenda to discuss and vote to approve a proposed calendar for the Board of Selectmen for the year 2017. And all events that are on this calendar are subject to change or by the call of the chair. When the Board of Selectmen set their calendar for long range planning purposes, other boards, committees, and commissions have the information that they need to plan and schedule their obligations and responsibilities accordingly. The Board of Selectmen meetings and the summer schedule and the winter break mirror those scheduled for the past six years. Um, so uh, we had a chance to look at the schedule. It, it, it does mirror the previous year and as I stated, the past six years. So if uh, we have no questions on the proposed calendar, I think I'll accept a motion. The 2017 proposed uh, board of selecting calendar be approved as written. Uh, motion by Bill. Is there a second? Second. Second by Dan. Is there any questions or discussion on the calendar? Uh, yes. I just want to make a note that uh, any date that's not here, that's not a holiday, uh, is always a meeting is always subject to the call of the chair, and there will be some meetings. Uh, that could be removed from the calendar by the call of the chair or what we for. There's some Christmas dates in there that could probably get adjusted next year and so forth. Yes. Simple comment. That's correct. And you are right. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, hearing none. I do that to be unanimous. Uh, can we have a motion to approve the minutes? of November 21st. A motion by Bill, second by Arthur. All in favor of approving the minutes of November 21st, please say aye. 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 Opposed, hearing none, I deem it to be unanimous. Can I have a vote to approve or amend, if that's the case, the minutes of November 28th? So move, Mr. Chairman. Uh, moved by Arthur, second by Bill. Uh, any questions? Hearing none. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, I deem that to be unanimous. Old business. Does anyone have an issue under old business they would like to discuss? Hearing none, I would move on to the town administrator's report. Mr. Chairman, um, I know that uh, you've been in discussion with uh, some of the uh, participants in the Copperwood 40 b project on Birch Street. Um, I'm pleased to, uh, to report that uh, the developer and uh, some of the other participants, uh, Kevin Seelan and the uh, Atlantis Company, you know, have, uh, have agreed that they would definitely abide by the conditions set forth by the ZBA when the ZBA approved that 40B project. And that uh, those conditions include the hours of operation for truck traffic um, and bringing in 
Phil to the project. Uh, also, that they definitely have agreed to the hours of construction that can occur on Monday through Friday and on Saturdays. Um, one of the conditions that um, was little known um, that the building department wasn't really aware of was the fact that uh, there would be no construction on any legal holiday, regardless of when that holiday came. So, for instance, Veterans Day was a Friday, and uh, you know, uh, I had asked the police department to send a cruiser uh, out to uh, the site to inform the gentlemen that were working that they were not allowed to work on uh, on that holiday. So I think uh, uh, all sides now have agreed that we are fully aware of the conditions that were tell us what he's going to do. And how he's going to bend us over, and how he's going uh, to enjoy The other question I think that remains uh, is the construction of what is called the hallway, which is a shot property on the um, We're still waiting on a written agreement from the developer uh, before we would allow them to construct that road uh, to. Uh, to bypass uh, using Valley Street uh, at all and, uh, for this particular project because they are bringing fill in from the uh, Matthias property on Valley Street uh, through the conservation property on Birch Street and back on Birch Street over as opposed to trucks that were that I saw today um, traveling westbound on Bird Street to the site or Valley Street running eastbound to go to Route 53 and then back up Bird Street. That was the, the route that was um, ordered by the ZBA when they uh, passed those normal conditions. Now, when we use the Hall Road, there will be no need for those trucks leaving the Valley Street Broad to use Valley Street to get the three of them to cutting through the Hall Road and then coming we out onto Birch and then it's only a half a mile down Birch to get to the project. So that'll be a big help on truck traffic on those two streets. And speaking of truck traffic, uh, I spoke to the town manager at Duxbury, and uh, hopefully after the Christmas holidays and the holidays period, that uh, we will be getting a letter of support for the truck exclusion on Birch and Valley Streets. They, they supported the Public Safety Committee, uh, voted unanimously to support uh, the truck ban on those two streets. Uh, because the numbers were probably the highest that we've seen for any any truck exclusion project in town. Uh, you know, the five five percent threshold is what's required by Mass DOT. And in some instances, that number was uh, 12, 13 percent on those two streets. So, um, any, once the truck exclusion is in place on Valley and Birch, the only authorized truck traffic would be coming and going from the Hall Road, and that's only on Birch Street, and that would be about a half a mile. Yeah. Well, I mean, the delivery trucks that are making deliveries to the area are exempt, but it, is, it appears from OCPC's survey that there are a lot of vehicles that are using those streets as a cut through from Pembroke from Route 53, Duxbury, Kingston, to Hanson, Halifax, uh, Route 27, uh, 106, what happened? Uh, at this time, I'd, I'd like to just make a personal thank you to Chief Wall, who has responded to issues that uh, you and I have raised coming from residents of uh, Birch and Valley Street. And uh, he has uh, not only investigated himself, 
the complaints. He's very well aware of some of them. And uh, we're going to have the electronic speed control device placed on Valley Street. And uh, there will be uh, more police presence in that area uh, as best can be done by the chief and still meet his other responsibilities. So thank you to Chief Wall. Anything else? Ed? Um, yeah, the other item that we have listed is uh, an update on the proposed properties on surplus property auction. Uh, um, I've had uh, several meetings with uh, our treasure collector regarding that, uh, regarding what properties um, will be allowed to be auctioned, those that uh, either have been in the past or could be in the future uh, voted on by town meeting to be disposed of. Uh, there are some uh, qualifications that are associated with each of these properties. Um, some may have already been voted on by a previous town meeting. Um, and there are a couple other conditions that we met. So, uh, you know, we're working on that so that we could ensure that we would have that auction date scheduled for the end of January. And the final thing I would just like to um, encourage those of Pembroke citizens that have not purchased the Christmas tree to go to the Kiwanis Tree Sale, which is located out there at the Heron Road Park. Uh, they were doing a, a great job. I had the pleasure of uh, being there for about three hours on Saturday. Yes. Santa Claus and Santa Claus had a lot of pictures taken with a lot of the youngsters here in town. So it was a, a very enjoyable uh, time spent there with the, the gentleman from the co okay. Anyone have any questions for uh, Hearing none, we'll move to ask the selectmen. Are there any issues? Anyone would like to raise? Yes, ma'am. So I had some citizens reach out to me regarding the Wi-Fi at the town library, and I reached out to Deborah Wong, who told me that she's been working on it with Comcast for the past few months, and they put together a temporary solution, and they're working towards a more permanent solution to uh, make the Wi-Fi stable. Well, and, there's also Very good. and Matthew, I might add to that, on a, from a permanent standpoint, that is uh, a subject that the cable committee has on their docket <coughs> when we begin the uh, new negotiation for the time. Yeah. I just want to put a call out for new members for the Town Government Study Committee. Uh, the committee that's uh, formed about a year and a half ago, and we just lost uh, a couple of uh, members, so we have some open seats. And if anyone's interested in uh, learning how the government of Pembroke works and, and how to make it better, uh, we'd appreciate your help. So if there's anyone out there with any interest, uh, please call the Board of Selectmen, and uh, we'll explain to you what the committee's uh, mission is, and hopefully you'll be able to join us. Uh, we, we met last Wednesday, but did not have a quorum, uh, so we could really use the help. And also, in that vein, <clears throat> to get the word out a little bit, Lou, if you could, as chairman, uh, if you could request that the, uh, the committee meet before the board of selectmen and give an update, a personal update, it might help uh, infuse a uh, little light into the committee, and it may even gain some interest from uh, well, some new folks. So if you could put a call out, uh, a request out to the committee uh, as chairman, and we can see what our dates uh, best suit everyone. All the holidays coming up, hopefully we can do it before the holidays. If not, uh, we'll pick a date soon. Thank you. I will do that. Yes, Bill. Um, I just have one thing. Uh, speaking of Christmas and all that coming up, uh, we still have a lot of the town historic books over in the library that are for sale. They would make an excellent Christmas gift to somebody. So I want to see uh, them all over to the library. And uh, there's uh, several cases of books left over there, the historic books, and one from some pages long. It has all the history of Pembroke in it. Uh, really nice book. It came out uh, very good. So, uh, we would like to pretty much try to get rid of them as much as we could. So, uh, that's
just a thought somewhere that uh, somebody out there would like to give that to somebody. Uh, those folks are, uh, like I said, really nice. Well, I think it's a good suggestion uh, for Christmas, a good idea for a gift. Uh, I have one myself, and it is beautifully done. And there's a lot of history, all the history that could be put in the pages of a book are in there with some beautiful pictures. And uh, if you'd like to get a handle on what Pembroke is all about and how did we get from where we started to where we are now, that's an excellent book. I think that's a great suggestion. And Dan, to get back to the Town Government Study Committee, I'd just like to tell the public that uh, this board is really behind this committee. There's a lot of important work that needs to be done and can be done. Uh, we just need some people to say, I will help you and I will and I will work with this committee to get it done. So, thanks for bringing that up. Yes. I just want to personally thank, I think I speak for the whole board, and I say a sincere thank you to Kathleen Keegan and the whole tree lighting committee. I was down, I know, it's like a bolt over town at the tree lighting on Sunday. It was a great event, a lot of people from Pembroke out, and a fun, fun day. Seems like you got here already, yeah. Yes. When uh, Kathleen Keegan was in to see us, and uh, she outlined the events that were going to be there. It was amazing the number of different events that were going to be there that day. And it certainly sounded like a fun experience for the many hundreds of people that did go. It was really great. Um, do we have any new business anyone would like to bring up? Um, I would like to communicate with the Board of Health on the issue of uh, banning plastic bags in the town of Pembroke. Um, I was told by one of the members that they have discussed it, but they, um, I don't know where they stand on it or how far they've gone, so I would like to invite you. Uh, the chair or any representative from the Board of Health to uh, tell the Board of Selectmen where they are on this project. I think that's such a waste of time. I can't stand my time to get there. Why? <laughs> what, what, what's the problem? I, I, like you're saving the planet because you, you ban plastic bags? I, th I think it's just a, it's a vanity boat. It's, 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 it's ridiculous. As a matter of fact, those bags are recycled at least once, sometimes twice. They get more use after after I'm done shopping with them. So it's 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 a vanity boat. Think about the towns that do it and the type of people that live in them. Well, there you hear the other side, folks. <laughs> but uh, I know there is another side to that discussion, and I would like I would like to hear both sides. And I'm only bringing it up because other towns have proceeded with this ban, and I really don't know what the results are. So it's interesting uh, because of the environment and the arguments to have a ban on them, but I really need to hear the whole story, and that's both sides. So uh, I'd, I'd like to invite the chair of the Board of Health to just tell us where they are on it and what their opinion is of it. And then, to save a plastic bag, then you have to use, how many trees do you have to kill for the paper bags? It's, so, hang on. Well, <laughs> I don't feel that strongly about it, but just politically, yeah. political correct is running mine. That's all. Well, what you said is true. If they're going to use paper bags, they have to cut down What else trees. are you going to do? You're going to carry That's 27 right. cans of tomato? Well, we, at my house, we have bought cloth bags. And we, and we take them with us every time we go shopping. So that's why I you know, really don't have much of a problem if they were to eliminate the plastic bags only because I don't use them. So, but I know other people do. Yes. Hi, uh, sorry, not as the press, just as a member of the public. Um, the net. Yeah, no problem. Sorry. 
What's just, your name? My name's Bonnie. Um, I live on Pleasant Street. I'd just like to make a quick comment to the board um, in support of banning plastic bags. I know that's not officially something you guys are considering right now, but in the future, if it comes up, um, I think it would be amazing for the town. We live right next to the ocean. We live with so many lakes and rivers and other bodies of water in our town. And anything that starts in one of those bodies of water is going to find its way to the ocean. Right now, there's a patch of plastic the size of the state of Texas in the Pacific Ocean. Every year, thousands of sea turtles, shorebirds, and other animals that live in the ocean wash up ashore or are found by fishermen that have plastic in their stomachs. Sometimes they don't choke on it, sometimes it just fills up their stomachs so they never feel hungry, and then they never end up eating, and then they starve to death. We can do so much to protect the wildlife in our area that is super, super important to the food web just by banning plastic bags. And I know that Pembroke is just one small town, and I respect that. I know that a lot of people do use plastic bags, but in surveys from towns and cities that have already passed in Massachusetts, and there are over 20, they found that most people were able to find another way to get their plastic bags, whether it's coming from another city, and that most people who use those plastic bags over and over again, I use them as trash bags. But like, most of the bags end up in the trash. The amount of bags that you use for groceries doesn't equal the amount of bags that you use to throw away your trash. And I don't think it's that much to ask that if people do think they're gonna be burdened by using you know, having to buy plastic bags instead of getting them for free from the grocery store. You can just go next door to one of the other towns that hasn't banned plastic bags. And I'd also like to suggest that if the town finds that people are super, super against banning plastic bags here, maybe we could put a small tax on them. Five cents for plastic bags, and then you can use paper bags. And you won't be carrying tomato soup home. And I don't mean this with disrespect, I'm just saying. You're not going to be carrying stuff home in your hands. You can switch over to reusable bags. It is not that hard or that burdensome to keep them in your car for when you need them. Sorry, just something I'm super passionate about. Wanted to make a comment. No, I understand, Bonnie, and uh, I, absolutely right. I, 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 I disagree with some of the, some of the stuff that you said. Oh, the, the stance on it, so you know, we can respect what you said. Oh, I agree. But not about the floating trash, because I have seen shows on it. <laughs> that is true. For the it's a, it's a yeah. real mess. Yeah. Well, thank you, Bonnie, for bringing that information. Thank you for letting me rent. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Um, upcoming issues we have scheduled, uh, December 12th at 7 p.m., transfer of taxi operation license, Pembroke Town Taxi, Charles Souza. Also on December 12th, uh, we will vote on our annual liquor license renewals. On January 9th, a request for appointment to the Recreation Commission, Corey Pento. Also in January, with a date to be determined, Jennifer <coughs> Mathias, the Hill Bog Project update. Also in January, a date to be determined, David Shea, Pembroke Chamber of Commerce. Are there any other issues uh, that the board would like to bring up? Hearing on Mr. Fawn, do we have a need for executive session? Yes, sir. We do. Yes, but move. We do have an executive session on the matter of general law on chapter 30, section 21, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining and litigation. The bargaining and litigation position of the public body and the chairs of the class. And this would be to discuss clerical, DPW, police, and finding And the chair does declare. Is there a second? Second. Second by Arthur. Uh, all those in favor, Dan? Yes. 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 The next regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Selectmen will be on December 12, 2016 at 7 p.m. Thank you very much for tuning us in, and uh, we'll see you next Monday evening.